Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to mold 72. So this one is a large mold. It is quite long and I am praying that it shrinks down enough again that it will fit in the kiln. I'm hoping for this firing it will be fine and it will shrink and I'm just hoping that it's going to be small enough that it's going to fit. Anyway, I open it up to reveal this large platter. Now, let me tell you, this platter was a bane of my existence. Every single time I poured it, it was not satisfying. It didn't look clean. It had all these ripples. The base wasn't great. I didn't know how the base was meant to be, whether there was meant to be a foot. It kept cracking. It was just a nightmare. I had to keep jiggling the mold to get the clay into all the areas because sometimes I would pour it and it was like holy oh my gosh it was just not a fun time I think I need some way of like maybe like a straw or something to get some airflow into this mold it's just those little holes weren't cutting it there was the mold there it's a rectangle plate I managed to get four out of this I was not gonna try anymore I, I wasn't gonna risk it so I got four I bisque fired them and I wanted to do this really cool concept of like a large whale on these platters I don't know why I just sort of thought I'm gonna do a whale <laughs> anyway so I did this whale design and I thought let's go back to that bubble glaze technique so I made some bubbles and I shook them in the jar by a recommendation by you so much easier um, and then I did still blow them over a little bit but they were already kind of bubbled so I could kind of just dab them on you guys all had such wonderful tips and tricks on that bubble glazing video from an earlier reveal they were amazing um, if you want to know how to bubble glaze I read the comment section like that was amazing so for these I also added white this time so I did a mix of blues I did one with purple but I also added white because I was like, oh, the little bubbles look like sea foam. So because I'm doing the whale, I was like, that would be a cool little touch to have some like sea foam in the background. So this is just the backdrop, right? So I'm going to add the design on top. I know it's not a very original idea to use white as sea foam and on a sea piece. Like it's not very original, but I just think it will just really add a bit of depth and a little bit of a differential color and highlight to the bubble background because I want it to be subtle, but I still want it to be complimentary, you know? It's a real nice balance. Anyway, adding those final touches and something I forgot that I could do is download my time-lapse sketches of my Procreate. Um, so with Procreate, I often do little sketches pre-painting on my pottery. It's just sort of like a trial run, I guess, and sort of navigating what I want it to look like. Sometimes I play with the colors. You'll see on this time-lapse, I was having a look at different shades. But I thought I'd show you that because this is my little whale design that I did on Procreate that I printed off on the right size. And I'm just cutting this out to make sure that it is the right size and it fits on the platter exactly how I want it to which it did I was really happy with how it placed in the flat area of the platter so it doesn't have the I guess it, none of the design is like resting against the curved edges it's on the flat surface area which is what I wanted so then what I did was I traced my little whale and rubbed it onto the platter and then neatened it up with a grey lead so that I had really thought long <laughs> strong thick lines uh, so I knew what I was painting now the reason I traced this one instead of freehand drawing it was because I wanted all the waves to be the same and whenever I draw something I can never draw it twice I don't know why I just I always get all like oh I can't do it again anyway so I traced it and now I'm filling it in so most of this video is me filling this design in and trying to make the underglaze thick enough so that you can not see the bubbles underneath but I'm also kind of hoping that you can see the bubbles underneath so it gives it this really cool texture of like this sort of translucent whale swimming in the bubble sea or something I don't know I've never done whales I've never done ocean art before actually oh wait yes I have that's a lie <laughs> I've done it on the seals but I don't really dabble in ocean art at all um i think it's such a good topic and a really interesting area that you could literally spend your whole art career painting about because there's so much you can do with 
ocean the ocean theme like you've got corals you've got fish you've got different species of fish you've got different species of animals that live in the sea you've got different colors i mean just look at the great barrier reef how beautiful and stunning the variation of colors in there just like forever inspiration i mean all the species of corals oh gosh i could do so much with a sea theme like i could spend a year on a sea theme and still not cover it so last time I did some sort of really, really fine detailed work like this, I did it off camera uh, and I got a few questions of people being like, how did you get the line so fine with underglaze? Uh, some people, if you uh, can paint really fine lines, you're probably like, those lines are thick. No, they are so thin for underglaze. They are, they're, they're really hard, okay? I, I've got no words to explain how hard it is to paint with underglaze in a really fine line detailed way because the consistency of underglaze is like chunky as it's like painting with pva actually pva is quite creamy you know like the pva craft glue as a kid or the like lumpy one with the like red stick that you used to it had the smell anyway it's like that it's really chunky and lumpy like it's quite creamy it's really creamy still too but it's got a really textured consistency which makes it really hard to apply you also have to I'm, I'm making it sound like it's really hard it's not that hard but it's a lot harder than other mediums like a watercolor or acrylic paint uh, but the other issue is you need to have it on thick so that it shows up in the kiln because uh, if it's not thick enough you're not going to see all these detailed lines so sometimes you have to go over them a few times whereas when I paint a lot of the time I'll really cake it on sometimes I'll go back to areas I can tell that are a bit patchy but this was not my point this is me just explaining it but the way you get nice fine lines is it's all about the brush and your technique and practice I made it sound harder again anyway three tips uh, it's all about your brush it's all about your technique and it's all about practice okay three um, so first off you want a fine liner brush if you want to do fine lines you want a fine tipped brush you can get really long ones you can get small little ones like this and what I'm doing is I'm only dragging the very tip of the brush can you see me doing that I'm only dragging the very very tip of the little bit of underglaze on there so for these brushes because they're so short you have to keep dipping your paintbrush back in the underglaze a lot so that's where you get a longer brush and you can have a lot more underglaze on that brush I personally don't prefer those ones as much but th for this one I really enjoyed the process and the sort of meditative nice the relaxing nature of sort of dipping and adding and sort of following the lines as I went so that's the first tip uh, your brush and then it was also the technique part which is to use the tip of it just let the paint do the talking don't drag your brush along just let the tip sort of glide along um, that's how I do it and then just practice that that's my tip for fine lines I hope that's helpful I sometimes feel like the best way to learn for me is to I guess admire and be inspired by artists but to also watch what they're doing that I'm inspired by so that I can have a look at what technique they're using and what way they're doing it so that I can adapt it to my own style or my own way of thinking I hope that that footage close up of me painting on that angle was helpful so that you could see how the lines sort of go on because I don't think I've really filmed from that angle before anyway I decided to brush on the glaze that's because they're too shallow to dip and I didn't want to get glaze everywhere um, but this was quite satisfying regardless and then I popped them in the kiln yes they just fit in thankfully uh, I did have to do two separate firings the first I put all three in and then the last one I put one on the top load with a few other things. Um, I felt like it was such a waste of a kiln firing with just three plates in there. And that's why I don't like doing big things in this tiny little kiln because I feel like it's such a waste when I could have so many little things fired in there. Anyway, I got them in there and here is the finished results. I love these. These are so fun and what a cute little series of platters. I love each color that I chose. So with each whale plate, I did a different combination of colored bubbles and a different combination of whale colors and flowers on the whale's backs. And I just wanted this to be a sort of complementary set where they were all the same sort of design, I guess, but the colors and the way the bubbles and the, the formation of the flowers on the back made them their own unique artwork. 
so there was the first one the dark blue with the green flowers the green flowers sort of melted into the blue a bit but I find that quite a really lovely subtle touch I love this plate a lot because the bubbles formed a little border around the platter which is really sweet and I love how this sort of navy blue pops I think it looks really gorgeous and a really moody blue which is really subtle and lovely the next one I did was this purpley one and I actually am shocked when I was painting this the purple was so bright on the bubbles now you can barely even see them and same with the purple on the back I think just that purple is maybe a little bit more prone to burning out a little bit um, but I still love it and this one is the one I painted on camera I absolutely love it I think it's so gorgeous you can see those little white sea foamy details there I feel like every time you look at these you see something new which is so wonderful and on this one in particular I like how the bubbles you can see it through the fins there as well uh, I just I really like them as for stacking they're all a bit wonky and wobbly as I said I had issues with them coming out of the mold I had to do a lot of sculpting posts coming out to make sure that they were complete I had no cracking which was great because I had to fill in a few cracks but otherwise they look totally amazing what do you think of my whale platters let me know in the comments don't forget to do your thing like subscribe and here is your sneak peek for the next reveal